All right, Doombots, part two. We're going to talk about ISO 8s and IOGs. That's the core of the system. We're not going to go into classes. We're not going to go into uh, details of characters yet. Just the system. And this is going to be a relatively quick video because we touched upon a lot of this in part one. So we're going to use Mr. Sinister as an example. And you can quickly just check right here all the stats that show up accordingly. Uh, as we've already discussed, uh, each ISO 8 has two different variables uh, the class or the role of the character which would be support uh, blaster brawler protector and controller and if you remember how stark tech worked at the very beginning you prioritized health and damage since those were the most important stats but because improving the uh, health or damage stat in a stark tech for bio improved like 30 characters uh, um, or so but uh, ISO 8s are specific to the person you're currently working on. There is a little bit of difference. That said, for the most part, the damage uh, and health ISO 8s will give your character the most uh, noticeable power increases uh, as they go up. So just kind of keep in mind that if you have to choose one to invest in first or if you're prioritizing working on character A, as you're moving up to uh, dot ratings in both the ISO 8s and the class, that health and damage will be the most impactful uses. Follow up with maybe you can make an argument for focus on most characters and then resist and armor, armor being the least relevant but still equally necessary stat to work on. That's of course if you're looking to just kind of slowly over time invest in the right things because you've decided hey i want to work on a character like mr sinister and i really want to make sure that uh, he's constantly just a little bit stronger because arena or war or whatever reason uh, so that's that's the separation of the iso eights. now we're going to go into the dots so the dots right up here uh, and that's a term we're stealing from star wars galaxy of heroes because we want to because everything else in this game was stolen from them so why not this uh we're going to call these dots. You can call them levels, but le there's so many things that have levels. You have ability levels. It's just easier to refer to these as dots uh, to show that I have a two dot mod or ISO 8. I have a three dot ISO 8, etc., etc. So the opening dot for all of these abilities is a flat 2% health, and it goes up by 2% every dot it gains. So the first dot uh, will just go straight to health. The first dot for Sinister will give him 2% health, uh, and it costs just having one. This total that you see, this ISO 8s to fuse, this is the total number of ISO 8s that need to get dumped into Sinister. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and put this ISO 8 right on him. Boop. Uh, and now, I still have enough ISO 8s to fuse because I've always had three. One of them is on him, so I only needed two extra to fuse this one up. That's how you're ranking it up. So right now my Sinister has a flat 2% health increase. Uh, if I were to rank this up to two dot, he would have a 4% health increase. You notice the power went up just a hair and etc. etc. One thing I will draw your attention to is the amounts it costs. So this is to fuse to go to three or to two dot, it costs three, and it takes 1,000 ions, ions being the currency, we'll go a little bit more into that in a second. The next stage, uh, assuming I've already dumped those three into here, uh, I would have three of nine towards this next stage, so it'll take six more, or basically double. Uh, the next step up is 27, of which you'd already have nine, so 18, or again, double what it would take to go to four, the, the total number. So reasonable numbers all around. Uh, and then of course we get to the most ridiculous one, which is the five uh, dot ISO eight. Uh, this costs 81. It is incredibly reasonable that you will have one or more characters relatively soon at level two and level three. If you are specifically targeting them, trying to find specific ISO 8s or if you're spending quite a bit of money buying the store, refreshing the store, etc, etc. This is the one that's going to kind of hold people back a little bit. 
Uh, and of course, when you go into classes and you see like, well, the reason why is because that last upgrade is usually the most important one. So you really have to make sure. Uh, I would recommend just in general that if you are working on any character that you deem to be uh, relevant enough to put these ISO 8s on them early, at least bring them up to two. It's the extra 10,000 health increase. Um, it's plus, you know, the 4% bonus health and all the rest of the stats you get from the actual ISO 8s themselves. Um, I would recommend two is the kind of soft stop point. If you believe you're going to work on a character, just get them to two dots. And one of the reasons why is that allow you to always have 10,000 health no matter which class you end up choosing. And you can purchase multiple uh, classes. So I will bring one other thing into this. Uh, the cost of fusing does go up um, each step with, I believe, the highest and most expensive one being 50, 40 or 50,000 that I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'm sure that information is relatively, but it's a lot. Now, as you see, I have 200,000 ions because that's just how many I have because I'm not spending them yet to bring it up. You're going to notice that this is a resource you'll get a pretty moderate amount of, especially as you're spending your energy every day and on cooldown in the, the farm area. You should never really run out of these. If you did run out of these, it's going to probably be because maybe you invested in too many characters too early. Kind of the same with everything else. Treat the ISO 8 system the way you would treat literally every progression system in this game. It's important to work on key characters like your arena team or your raid team or maybe a war defense team that you really need to help you out depending on where you are in the game. Uh, those are the guys you want to work on first. And then everybody else, even if you're just like, I really like this character, they can wait a little bit on ISO 8s. ISO 8s can help you balance out teams uh, because they are stat increases and as we know stats are just pretty good overall but i wouldn't necessarily bring every you know place every iso 8 on my top 50 characters i would probably save right now because it just started for maybe the top five to ten characters i have across multiple games and any overlap if i'm using black bolt in both arena and raids he's probably going to be one of the characters i look to iso 8 first same thing with like maw or thanos you are going to want to tap your red stars a little bit when it comes to this because red stars are still more important than this entire system. This entire system is still just a gear system. It would be the equivalent of getting a gear tier 15 right now uh, in how it impacts your roster by, you know, ranking up abilities, etc. But red stars are still a very relevant part of the game and you still want to know that just because you have high ISO weights on a character, it won't balance out for having bad red stars. Bad red stars are always uh, or the most important thing to improve if the opportunity presents itself. So that is the gist of what you want to do with your ISO weights. There's one other thing I wanted to, to kind of touch on, and that is the find feature. So for me, I'm using Mr. Sinister here, and I didn't accidentally place this in him. I intentionally place this on him so I'll let you guys watch me just kind of invest in all the way up in my Mr. Sinister and unlock the class as you can see I can now choose a class but I do have the ability to fuse up for all these support characters thinking about all the other support characters I have um I really want a second one so I'll go ahead I'll spend the small amount of resources it takes to fuse up ISO 8s the uh, bear with me guys there's still a little buggy surprise surprise uh, and then we notice I can't bring up the second on Mr. Sinister. Well, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to use this find feature and look for exactly one more. I have one equipped. I have one missing. Let's check find. Oh, apparently not only uh, can I farm for one, I can go straight to the ISO 8 store, which I would recommend every single person uh, spend your resources to buy these all the time. You will get more of these resources. The specific, these resources are, or the ISO 8s themselves, are going to be the biggest bottleneck, not so much the uh, ions that you need in order to get them. Plus, worst case scenario, there is a way where you can spend cores to get more ions. If that's something you're interested in doing, by all means. Uh, and of course, the basic orbs themselves give you just ISO 8s. We can't quite sell 
ISO 8s or dust them, as, as you would refer to in other games. Um, but ultimately, as long as I'm opening these items up and, and getting more value, uh, it should be okay. Don't worry too much about ions. You shouldn't be spending that many of them to begin with. So let's go back now. Um, I did have this if I wanted to farm one of these. Uh, you know, can quick check. This is support damage. This is blaster armor. I do have three of these, so if I ever did want to place this, it'd be okay. Uh, I'd probably end up farming this one. So obviously the, uh, the campaign, just so you know, uh, the ones with two are clearly the better ones to farm. But the ones with four, the 24s, have some unique ones that are kind of built in, hard to get. Think about it like farming Shocker out of the Sinister Six. Uh, there's a lot of options here. The good news is you'll always get something, it seems. I have never uh, farmed these and not gotten a drop. Uh, that could just be my luck, or I could have just not been paying attention. It does seem as though uh, it's almost a guaranteed drop of ISO 8s, mainly because this campaign is exclusively ISO 8s with like, arbitrary amounts of resources. It is nice to see an amount of purple gear in the ISO 8 campaign, just throwing that out there. So you can get additional resources and some gold, but... It is what it is. So now we finish this off. I'm going to go ahead and fuse this ability. Uh, and now, so not only, oh, apparently I could do this too. I'm not going to, but apparently I can bring that up. The reason I'm not going to is I don't really have the ability to invest in anyone else, and I'm not super looking forward to any of the three bonuses that I would be getting for Sinister. Not a big deal. Uh, but it's there in case I want it. I can also use the remainder of these to invest in another support character, like maybe a Shuri. Uh, we'll see as time goes on what I'm missing. I personally plan on bringing a lot of characters to uh, rank 2 before I, I worry about anything else. But that's just my thing. You might want to rank up one character very specifically as quickly as possible. Uh, that depends on where you are in the game. Ultimately, as long as you're working on one of the top characters, you know what I mean, like the Symbiote Spider-Man, the Mr. Sinister, uh, Black Bull, as long as I'm working on a character that I know is going to have longevity, you're probably okay. You want to stay away from characters like Crossbones and uh, even Zemo, for, for lack of a better word. Like Zemo, sure, he's going to be great in war and PvP, but... You're not going to get a lot of value out of working on a character that's only good in one game mode. You want a character that's good in multiple game modes or even a character that's good for you in multiple game modes. Um, specifically game modes that you have to do every day. Uh, like, not Blitz, but uh, War, Arena, Raids, etc. So that's just my advice on this. I wouldn't worry. I'm afraid to see anybody who has, you know, ISO 8s in Yondu. Like, please don't do that. Please, it's just, it's too new. These are too scarce resources right now for you to start getting cute with stuff like Yondu. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, and the one other thing, the last thing I want to tell you, uh, and it kind of goes in line with what we just uh, saw, is when you go to the campaign, please make sure you're never at energy cap. I know this is kind of... Uh, a hat on a hat you guys know you don't want to stay at energy cap but because the iso 8 campaign is more unique than some of the others uh you know if you miss out on one energy or 10 energy because you didn't log in for 50 minutes when you were at cap that you know that energy line it's not really going to hurt you that 10 energy is one farm no big deal but the ISO weight campaigns aren't unevens. They're not, you know, 8 or 10. They're 12 and 24, and you only get 120 to cap energy. So you're really only farming, you know, one 5 node or one 10 node every time you're at energy cap, making it incredibly relevant. So hopefully that was some good information for you about how to focus, what to do with the ISO 8s, how they work and how to prioritize them a little bit. The third part of this series, we're gonna go into classes, which is why I left him right here. I intend on using him as kind of the guinea pig for the rest of this, and in the final video, part four, we're gonna discuss the uses of the characters and why I might wanna hot swap between them. So if you guys are interested, stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully this was helpful. If there's anything specific you'd like to know, you can stop on my stream, twitch.tv slash Tony or 
you can just ask me in the comments and I'll probably add it to the video. I can't guarantee I'll answer every question because this is a lot. Like I said at the very beginning, uh, this is a very simple system with incredibly complex uh, decision making in end game decisions. So there's no one right wrong answer. There's no tier list. It cannot exist. I do apologize to tell everybody who wants to just know what to do. Unlike everything else, this is like Red Stars or um, any or even like Stark Tech where you're just going to want to work up the characters and kind of figure out what works best for them. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.